and welcome back to Nolan Financial Radio. My name is Tara Nolan from Nolan Financial. If you are new to the show, I'd just like to let you know that you can give Chris and I a call at 719-210-4242 if you have any questions. And also visit us online at www.nolanfinancialpartners.com. While you're at the website, be sure to click on the radio page because there you can check out past shows and you can also subscribe to the program on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. So again, please don't hesitate to reach out to Chris and I if you have any questions or you want to set up a face-to-face -face meeting. We do these shows because we believe financial success starts with being able to ask good questions. And at the end of the show, we always want to leave you with a couple good questions to ask to set yourself up for financial success, because that's what it's all about at the end. So we're going to talk today about simplifying your life to enjoy retirement. And so, you know, picture this. It's a scene I've heard often from my clients. You're almost retired. You're this close. Or that or you're very early in retirement and you're still feeling excited. And a whole new lifestyle is in front of you, just waiting to be explored. You're whistling your happy tune and nothing is going to get you down. And then you walk down into the basement. And what do you see? Boxes and boxes of old stuff old furniture pushed against the wall, covered in cobwebs. You start opening these boxes and you get sucked down the rabbit hole. You're looking at National Geographic magazines from the <laughs> 1980s, eight track tapes from bands that you wouldn't publicly admit to ever having liked, old <laughs> shoes, yellowed report cards. We believe that retirement is about simplifying your life so that you have fewer responsibilities and more fun. And man, cleaning that junk out, that is about as far from simplifying as you can get. You know, last year, Chris and I, we loaded up the, the horse trailer and Tony, we packed that thing full of stuff to take to the dump because in the Air Force, we got used to moving around and you would have a chance to throw away all that stuff. And we haven't moved for 15 years. And so it was crazy. But anyway, before we jump into the show, Tony, how are you doing today? I am doing great. Thanks for having me on the show today, Tara. And I'm just picturing you with all your Barry Manilow and John Denver eight track tapes uh, in the in the late seventies. Yeah, you were you were probably not even born yet, but uh, I had eight track tapes at one point in time. So that's how old I am. But uh, that's great. Well, I've been great. I had a crazy week. You know, it gets crazy busy. How about you? What have you and Chris been up to? Well, we just got back from a week in New Jersey, you know, for the speaking class that I did, the capstone oh, yeah. that was held off a little bit because of COVID was getting together to make a video. So basically the 45 minute keynote that I wrote, we condensed it down into 500 words. So about three and a half, four minutes. That's of crazy. An intro of what the speech is going to be about. And it was nuts, Tony. So the, the woman teaching the class, she was actually a, gra a graduate of Yale Drama School. And so we each had a half an hour to do our part. And it was like, cut, cut, <laughs> do that line again with more feeling. <laughs> do that line again and pretend like you're happy to be saying it. Do that line again. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. And, and then you have that moment where you're like sitting there and you're like, line. <laughs> yeah. What am I supposed really to say? Funny because every time like you had your little bit memorized, but as soon as you get the direction, like say it like this or do it like that, then you can't remember the line. Right. So. I have a whole. You didn't have a teleprompter. No, no, no. Because oh. you're supposed to be connecting with the people in the audience. Sure. And so with the teleprompter, that's that's a whole different thing. And so, yeah. Interesting. It was quite an experience, I'll say. I, I'm glad that I don't do acting for a living. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it's tough. It people think, oh, that looks acting looks easy, right? But it's 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 hard. It's a it's a lot of sitting around waiting, and then all of a sudden you're supposed to get up and be. You have happy, to perform. Perform. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Communicate Definitely. through the camera. That's a talent. That it's an actual talent. I've had to do a lot of promotional videos for a gradient, a company I work with, as you know. And uh, when they have me down, I'm like, "You sure you want me doing video?" Like when you wanted said, "Hey, we're going to start videoing the radio show," and I'm like, "Oh, I've never been able to properly explain <laughs> myself on camera." You know that. Uh, the camera adds a hundred pounds in my defense. That's what I always tell people. <laughs> In my defense, the camera adds a lot of weight. But uh, but uh, it's hard to look at the camera and communicate and then uh, also remember lines. Of course, in the studio when I'm doing promos, they have a teleprompter running 
Um, but usually yeah, I ad lib so much that they just give up on that after a while anyway. So, uh, but you've picked out a great topic. I mean, this, this is a good one. I mean, uh, I think it's, it's really great. Uh, you know, we want to simplify our lives and, you know, I think, um, I'm fired up for it because uh, it's always good when you can remind people and you always do Tara that enjoying retirement is about more than just the money, isn't it? It really is Tony. And that's like in my book, one of the chapters is wealth is a team sport and it's, yeah. it's retirement, a successful retirement. It includes money, but it's so much more than just dollars and cents. Right. And it's it's about a lot of things factor into making a retirement enjoyable and successful and a good retirement plan. Make sure that you have you have a holistic approach and you're looking at everything. And part of that is streamlining your life, simplifying your life so that you get to focus on what you want to be doing. And you're not not bogged down by all this other stuff that just collects around the corners. Right. Yeah, exactly. Well, and I'm looking forward to the book and uh, reading more about how wealth is a team sport. And I know you're going to be having a, a separate uh, show about that, a podcast, correct? We are. And it's that is one of the my favorite things. So in addition to the radio show with wealth as a team sport, we're going to I just talk to a lot of different interview, a lot of different experts in different fields, because this whole idea is you don't succeed at anything in life alone. Very well. right. Right. And exactly. And I, I love talking. I've talked with Air Force pilots. I've talked with um, accountants. I've talked with attorneys. I'm talking with all different kinds of people from different backgrounds, a couple of authors and a couple speakers. And everybody has the story of the team that helps them get where they're trying to go. Yeah. And we it always just relates back to finances because finances is part of any endeavor that oh, you're going to do. Sure. It and, has and so. To be. Just I love all these topics that come together because, Tony, we're all just people trying to make connections and trying to live our best life. Right. And and so simplifying your life is to me, it's all about getting rid of the clutter so that you get to focus your limited time and energy on the things that you really want to be doing. Yeah. And trying to get rid of that should do list. As much as possible. I like that. The should do list. Here, here, here are all the things I should do. Well, it helps by no. making a list. It, if you actually have the things you should do written down, actually, that's a step in the right direction. Uh, <laughs> but you need a, a list of things you're going to do and you will do, right? Absolutely. And then in just making that list of those should do things will help you all go, oh, I'm not doing those things. And those yeah. things can just, they're taking up space in my brain and living there right. rent free and they need to be gone so yes. that I can focus on living the life that I want to have. And, it, you know, it's it, possessions is a good thing. I, I heard a joke and I won't be able to tell it properly, but just basically the comedian was talking about, we don't only just have our 5,000 square foot houses. Now everybody has their separate storage space to store their extra crap that doesn't fit in their 5,000 foot house. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. And so and, uh. you know, and I was looking at, I was driving around town the other day, Tony, and it, I am shocked about the number of storage facilities that are going up. These it's huge, amazing. They're air conditioned. It's like my junk is living its best life. <laughs> yeah. They're building them around here too. I can't believe it. I'm like, wow, they're building another and massive storage facilities. I'm like climate control. They have their own rooms. <laughs> I'm like, what? Am I going to live there or with my stuff or is it just junk? And if people have that much stuff. If you have that much stuff that you need a storage facility you probably just need to get rid of stuff, right? It is, but I can tell you like every relationship is different. And with Chris and I, I am the one who will throw everything away. And Chris is the pack rat. Yeah. And, and you know how it is like every time you meet someone's parents, then you understand, you go, oh, that's why you're that way. <laughs> when, when I went to visit Chris's dad and in his, in his shop, he had jars for old screws that he had found. Oh yeah. Like, you know, in the Home Depot parking, just odd just <laughs> different Depot sizes, didn't go with anything. <laughs> just he had these jars of screws on yeah. the off chance that you might need one someday. Oh, you never know. <laughs> if you need a particular screw, I've got it. Rather than just go down and buy one for 50 cents at right, the hardware right. store. Yeah. And, and and so, you know, that's that's also part of that relationship thing is, is you're going to have, there's usually going to be the pack rat. And then the person is just like, Tony, if I could live in a hotel, I think I would be happy. Someone to make my bed every day. Oh, no, yeah. no extra everything in its place. You know, that would probably be my dream. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's weird because I am a little OCD that way when it comes to I need, I, I like 
to declutter feels good, but mm-hmm. yet I'm also somebody who loves stuff. So I always, uh, that hard thing for me. And my wife is a little the same way. Uh, we just hang on to different stuff. We're not crazy about keeping things like, oh, I got a jar of screws from a year ago or a box of rubber bands. We're not too terrible with that kind of stuff like my grandfather was or uh, my mother-in-law or my, you know, my mom and dad or t- my dad's that way. Uh, but I am that way with other things. You know, I have way more CDs and albums that I could probably ever listen to. So, and I collect them. So I have my collections and my, uh, my things that I'm crazy about that I have too many of. I think everybody has something, right? I mean, it does, Tony, seems like with our, with our grandparents, and our great grandparents, I see it's a holdover from the great depression. Actually, yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, didn't it was my have stuff. Yep. And and there there's value in being thrifty or frugal, right? That's all. That's a kind of an American value in a lot of ways. Is is the pride of of reusing and not being wasteful, but it can just take on a life of its own. You know, it think does. about, oh, gosh, you know, the the old couch that you have that you don't use it right now, but what if you what if you need it, or what if one of your kids is going to need the couch that so you end up just hanging on to it and you go and take a look at it and it's covered with five years of dust and, and no one would want to sit on it at any point nope. at this, but you have it just in case because you're trying to be smart financially and, and right. just make those good decisions. So it's all grounded in a good thought. Like the intention was good, <laughs> Yeah. but at some yeah. point it's taken over your life in a way that's not healthy. Right. But I mean, yeah, decluttering, especially if you're in your fifties or sixties and have decades worth of stuff, as many of us do when we get older, uh, I think it can seem like such a monumental task to declutter. But uh, if you start by getting rid of maybe one or two big things, like let's say you've got old skis, snow skis that you never use or water Mm -hmm. skis, uh, and uh, that's, uh, that'll free up a lot of space. They take up a lot of room or old furniture. uh, It may, Maybe just what you need, the motivation you need to really get going. But decluttering feels so good and it's so important as we head toward retirement, isn't it? Tony, it's really helpful because it just frees you up. It's just like it removes mental baggage. And so much yeah. about money, it's not math. It's about emotion and planning for retirement is about mentally understanding that you're in control and you know what's going to happen. And it's about yeah. setting yourself up to be in charge of the decisions that you're making. And so that you're just not at the mercy of the momentum that your life has taken on. And, you know, simple things like when you go through your boxes, you can find things like, you know, old photographs and, and documents. And so those are things that you can start small and just like scan them up and save them on hard drives. And there's things you can do to start making sure that you just don't have these mounds of paper, but still satisfy the need to go. If, if I really want it, I do have it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You mentioned photograph, you know, a lot of people save uh, receipts and bank statements from, I mean, I don't know how far back you're supposed to go, but we used to have shoe boxes full of receipts. I mean, like years, like 15, you know, find 15, 20 years ago receipts. <laughs> I don't think we oh, yeah. need those from 15 or 20 years ago. So we fi- eventually got rid of those, but, uh, and you want to make sure if it's a bank statements and receipts that you uh, have them shredded or dispose of them properly. You don't want to just uh, willy nilly throw stuff like that away, but you ha- you have to get rid of it. You have to downsize. And I mean, I've known people who have bags of bags, like my mother-in-law had bags uh, uh, bags like grocery bags full of other grocery bags. Oh, yeah. I mean, like tons of them in a crawl space. It's like, uh, what are these for? But it's again, it's the she was raised in the Depression era, and so uh, they save everything. My grandpa Whelan, uh, he on my mom's side, he saved. He had all his old farm buildings long after he didn't farm and he retired. Uh, you'd go in there, and there were little glass jars full, one you know, of tacks, screws, nails rubber bands, everything, little pieces, little, uh, you know, like uh, bolts without the nuts, without the nuts to go on them and another nuts with the no matching bolts and just tons of stuff like that. So uh, I think decluttering has a lot of importance, but you know, if you're a year or two from retirement, Tara, it's got to be even more critical, right? Well, it's a great time because, you know, coming up to retirement, Tony, it's not an end. It's a, it's a change to the new beginning. Yep. It's, it's, it's a gift to give yourself if you start decluttering your life. So that way you're you've created space for like your next new adventure. 
And that's what yeah. retirement, a successful retirement is all about, is setting yourself up for that next new adventure. And so, Tony, while we're talking about that, I was just going to say for the listeners right now, um, please give Chris and I a call at 719-210-4242. If you want to discuss and look at, are you set up on the path to success to have that great retirement? And do you have any concerns about your path that you're taking to retirement? Because we're talking about decluttering to open up and present, you know, a nice clean slate as you transition into that space. And a lot of that starts with making sure that you're doing the things today and you have the right plan in place and you're saving the right way. You have the right kinds of accounts to set you up for, you know, you've got to have that growth, but then you also have that protection in play. So anyway, Tony, that number is 719-210-4242 to set up that complimentary call. And you can also visit the website at www.nolanfinancialpartners.com and you can book a discovery call from there. All right. Sounds great, Tara. And listeners, we're going to keep going with our show here. It's been a good one. Uh, let's keep unpacking it. Tara, what do you have for us next? Well, one of the things that's interesting is when you talk about throwing things away or trashing, it's it's to get rid of actual trash and a great yeah. early step, <laughs> you know, that can make the oncoming task makes the larger tasks feel less daunting, you know, but walk around the house and just empty your trash baskets, bas baskets, say that, and take your recyclables out to the recycle bin. And gosh, Tony, I don't know if you're like me, but you know, in the mail, you know how you get, there's like one good piece of mail inside of all that junk. Yep. And you, you, you just throw it to the side on the first yep. day. I'll get to that. By the end of the week, you have this mountain. It's almost an yes. entire trash bag. itself. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's nuts. And, yeah. and so, just getting rid of that trash and totally off topic, but it reminds me when uh, Chris and I were PCSing back from Japan, we had uh, Japanese packers come in and Tony, they came in and they packed up everything, including the trash. So when I got oh. to my new assignment stateside, as I was unpacking my stuff, I actually unpacked, they packed up my trash. Oh <laughs> so, no. <laughs> so oh. I had to take trash. Luckily it was just paper and then nothing. You right. Know, crazy but just you know little <laughs> things like that can just take on a life of their own so give yourself yeah. a break and just you know. yeah that's crazy and paper just i mean a lot of times you just oh. have stacks of like oh I, I might need that someday or i meant to go through that and it just at some point you just go nope into the waste basket if i haven't touched it in a month or a year uh get rid of it right Oh, and I think paper must be like magnetic because, you know, all it takes is you have like one nice clean shelf or counter and you put a piece of paper on it. Next thing you know, it's full. Yep. <laughs> oh, it is. Yeah, it must be magnetic. I like that. Every open space in our house gets piled with junk or paper. And it's oh, just yeah. like you have to go through once in a while and just clean it all off and get rid of it. And it's, it's crazy how that goes. But, you know, so taking out the trash, recycling, shred that paper, that's a pretty easy one because usually a lot of that stuff doesn't, you don't have a lot of emotional attachment. You just want to get it out of there. But the other thing, Tony, I catch myself doing is hanging on to broken things. Like, have you ever had that favorite <laughs> coffee mug and the handle breaks off? And so you yeah. kind of set it aside because one day, you know, you're going to get out the super glue and fix it. Yep. And then that never happens. I have a, I'm looking over, I, I can see one thing that's been broken for about six months sitting on a shelf over there that I'm like, I'm going to get the super glue and put that back together. It's been there six months. So probably well, not happening. No. And my favorite, Tony, you reminded me of one of my clients confessed that he has two broken TVs in his garage. Oh. And I was like, why do you have broken TVs? He's like, well, <laughs> when I bought them, they were top of the line and I just can't throw them away. Oh yeah, you can. Yeah. And you should. <laughs> yeah. Electronics is a tough one because, uh, there are places that take electronics. You, technically you're not supposed to throw big electronic items like right. TV in the regular trash, but, uh, so they're a pain to get rid of oh, old cell phones, old radios, old stereos, uh, broken speakers, televisions, VCRs, videotape recorders for those of you listeners who are old enough to know what those are. So, yeah, I mean, this just old cameras. It's just we have a ton of that stuff in our garage and I just eventually we have to get rid of it. Right. So, so here's what I want people to think about. And for my financial planning clients, especially is harness that tendency to hoard and hang on to old things and use that as a way to build really good nest eggs. <laughs> and make it a good habit pattern to start building retirement nest eggs. That tendency we have to hoard and keep things just in case. Let's yeah. make that apply to money. That's how we can make this a win. That's a silver lining. 
Yeah, my neighbor has, uh, he always jokes, his wife buys every latest gadget and appliance, right? Mm -hmm. So if there's a, there's a coffee grinder, there's a iced coffee maker, a regular coffee maker, the Nespresso maker, then he's got like a special waffle iron and they've got a electronic thing, or a thing you can make breakfast sandwiches in. They've got a thing you can, it's an elect, uh, a, a quesadilla grill that's separate just for, so he has the, they have this huge shelf and cabinet in their living room onto the side and i said what's that he goes that's the small appliance graveyard and it's just <laughs> full of all these different appliances the latest <laughs> gadgets air fryers you know all these things that you know people uh you, the, the latest fads george foreman grills right yeah so oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, exactly or how about tupperware lids how about that Oh, right. Yeah. I, we seem to like get rid of it and, and they somehow they find their way back into the house. And yeah, I have another I know. drawer. It's a brand I new drawer. Was, I swear it was empty like two months ago. And now I can't <laughs> hardly close it because it's full of all yep. these lids. And, and I don't yeah. even let the lids go with anything. I just have these lids. Right. Yeah. We have a ton of lids that don't match and we have a ton of bowls, but none of them match. So we can never find the lid for any bowls. And then we have lids that we can't find bowls to. So it's just like, that's another thing that people could declutter easily. Right. Absolutely. Tony. And it just kind of comes down to, again, it's, it's the same thing we do with financial planning is prioritizing where are you trying to go and, and looking at all your stuff going, is this stuff helping me advance my life, helping me get towards my goals? Is it making my quality of life better with my family? And, and just take that time to prioritize. And that's the same thing we do with financial planning too, Tony, is we look at and say, do you have the right things in play to protect yourself for long-term care? Do you have the right things to, you know, your, are you taking advantage of the matching in your IRA, in your 401k so that you're building up that nest egg and prioritizing the things that you're doing that are actually earning you money. And it's yeah. the same thing with all your clutter. And if you find yourself going through your old stuff, and you, and you have to talk yourself into like justifying, well, here's why I need to keep this. You probably don't need it. No. And I think one of the best things um, someone taught me, and it was in terms of traveling, but kind of applies to this is, is pack, pack your bag. But at some point, don't worry about it. Because when you get there, if you really need it, you can buy it. Right. Yeah. It. And you can get by on a lot less than you think you can. And it's just like stuff. Everybody says, well, I might use that someday, or I really like that. But when is the last time you wore that? And that's clothing is a big one too. I mean, we have to like once a year, go through our closets and just clean out, just take the stuff to Goodwill or wherever, uh, donate it because, um, it's just, you know, wow, our closets are full. I don't wear any of these shoes anymore. So get rid of it. Right. Well, here's the technique that Chris and I have developed for that is we go through and clean out the closet and everything goes into the bag for donation. And the bag sits in the closet for six months. And if you haven't touched it in six months, then you can probably <laughs> live without it. But it, it helps with that little angst of I, I might need that, but I might need that. <laughs> so it's for us, it's a two step process out of the closet, into the bag, and then the bag can go to Goodwill later. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's a great games. process. Yeah. That, I like that. I like that. Yeah. We actually usually get bags of clothes and put them in uh, the trunks of our cars. Oh, there you and go. That's they, even better. They, they might stay in there for a week, but then we eventually go, we can, we got to empty out that. Well, we got to go to Goodwill, got to get rid of it. So it mm -hmm. makes it's incremental stages. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. But uh, the key is, is, you know, downsizing, you know, I can't, I can't hang on to that Def Leppard t-shirt that I wore in, uh, you know, 11th grade in high school. Right. right. <laughs> as well, much as know, I'd love to. And Tony, it's downsizing, but it's taking those baby steps and yeah. That's figuring out. And that's one of the big things that Chris and I do with our financial clients, Tony, is when we sit down, we, we always look at the big picture and go, OK, cartoon bubble above your head. What does success look like for you? What are your goals? But you're not going to get there overnight. So no. then we figure out what are the baby steps you can take today that help you walk up and get towards there? And it's the same thing. You know, a problem becomes big. It's not it didn't create the problem didn't develop overnight. No. So if you have this big problem, like you have this huge clutter problem, or you're trying to solve your financials for retirement, that's a big problem and you're not going to solve it overnight. But what you can do is start taking those baby steps so that you help solve that problem. And that's, yeah. that's where I, I love that 
planning process and the way people feel when they go, ah, oh, it feels so much better to be in control. And that's where decluttering or creating that financial strategy, it puts you back in the driver's seat and lets you start making those decisions so that you're living your best life and you're not just like being weighted down by all of your stuff. Yeah. 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 It just, it can get out of control and you know, you don't want to leave it for your loved ones after you're gone. That's why I think it's good to do that before retirement, uh, the couple of years before retirement and maybe the couple of years, first couple of years of retirement declutter, get rid of that stuff. So you can be free to think about the, the true hobbies that you want to do, you know, your true loves like traveling or spending time with the grandkids or, you know, what have you, uh, taking walks, it is really, it's a stress reliever. It relieves anxiety. They say decluttering relieves anxiety or reduces stress. It can actually affect your physical health. And so uh, it's really important to, to do that. And I think this has been a great topic today, Tara. It's really good because, you know, I'm just like, we have so much stuff in our crawl space and our storage spaces. I just want to rent a dumpster and just uh, sometime when my wife's out of town, of course, then I'll well, go dump all our stuff in the dumpster. And I want to take it in even another direction, Tony, is it's one of the best things you can do for your kids. So yeah. if, if, as a part of retirement planning, decluttering, and I don't know, but I come from an Irish Catholic family. And so we have a little gallows humor when it comes to death. And uh -huh. so one of the things is that when someone is, is, is approaching their death and, and having that is, is everyone walks around with a sticky pad and starts putting their names on the things that they want. Oh no. <laughs> 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 and, and and kind of the part of the unspoken rule is, hey, look, no one has put their name on that. So that thing just needs to go now. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and so it's it's a little bit of a dark humor, but it's a way that you can actually take care of your family, you know, and help when you pass, help them be set up for success. And in that emotional time, you've had a little humor involved in it, but you've also you've done some of the hard work because you think it's hard to throw your stuff out. And it's, it's even harder to throw somebody else's stuff out. Yeah. Yeah. And so yep. that decluttering is a gift that you can give to others. Yes. It's the gift that keeps on giving too. So, uh, it really frees you up. Well, Tara, we're out of time for today's show. Is there anything else you want to add before we go? Sure, Tony. So today's to show, we've had a lot of fun with it, but this decluttering idea of getting rid of the baggage, um, what we do with our financial planning, Tony, is we help clear away the mental baggage and the yep. financial baggage that we all have. So for those folks that are ready to sit down and get a plan written on paper, give Chris and I a call at 719-210-4242. Because once you take your ideas out of your head, you get them on paper, and then you make that actionable list of things that you're going to do to reach your retirement successfully, that's when life starts to feel a little more in control. You get that good feeling in your belly. So Tony, yep. that number is 719-210-4242. Give Chris and I a call to set up your complimentary appointment because we want to help you succeed. Sounds great, Tara. Uh, great show today. And listeners, that does it for today's episode of Nolan Financial Radio with our host, Tara Nolan. Join us again for another episode of Nolan Financial Radio. Take care and we'll talk with you next time.